In today's video, I'm going to talk about post-traumatic stress disorder. In particular, the long-term responses that some rape survivors tend to have as a result of their rape experience. As with so many responses to rape, some of these can be counterintuitive. However, once we understand the science behind the rape response, it makes a lot more sense. You've likely heard about PTSD before in relation to war-related trauma. The PTSD response to rape-related trauma is similar with unique distinctions based on the nature of sexual violence. Rape-related PTSD usually proceeds in a series of stages. Of course, every person is different and not every survivor will experience these stages in the same way. But over time, people who study the trauma response have found these PTSD stages to be common among rape survivors. As you learn about these stages, I hope that you will better understand some of the common reactions that rape survivors have to what happened to them. The first stage of PTSD, occurring shortly after the rape occurs, is called acute disorganization. In this stage, the survivor is likely to experience things like shock, an inability to concentrate, sleeping and eating changes, fear, helplessness, shame, mood swings, anxiety, and rage. Of course, not every survivor's experience is the same, but they are likely to share many of them. During this stage, a survivor is likely to say something like, something really bad happened to me? What did I do to deserve this? If you think about it, the symptoms I've mentioned are tiring to the body. It is difficult to continue in a state of shock, helplessness, and anxiety. So what often happens after a while is that the person will enter stage two, denial. Denial essentially allows the body to take a time out in the recovery process. In the denial stage, the survivor often attempts to block out the experience, to put it in the past, and even to deny that anything happened at all. In this stage, a survivor might say things like, I don't understand why you keep asking me about this. It was no big deal. The survivor may even say the rape didn't happen. This can be very confusing to the listener as they may conclude that the survivor made the whole story up. If the survivor is in the denial stage of PTSD, we need to realize that saying, it was no big deal, may all be part of the trauma response. Denial doesn't necessarily mean the rape didn't occur. After a while, many survivors will emerge from the denial phase entering stage three called long-term reorganization. Entering stage three can be caused by seeing the perpetrator, being in a similar situation to when the rape happened, or it just becomes difficult to maintain a state of denial. In this third stage, they're likely to re-experience some of what occurred in stage one, but they have more strength for it because they essentially took a break from recovery in stage two. So in this third stage, the survivor may have physical symptoms like eating and sleeping disturbances. They may be easily startled, and they are likely to have nightmares and flashbacks about the rape. They may change a number of things about their life, especially their daily routine. They may stay home more, change their place of work or school, change their friends, and change the amount of contact they have with family. The key thing in stage three is change. Someone in stage three may say something like, what happened to me was awful. I need to regain control of my life by changing things around me. If the survivor has good support from family, friends, and a good trauma counselor, they will hopefully enter the final stage, stage four, which is called the integration and recovery stage. In this final stage, the survivor tends to feel more in control, they're able to trust people again, and they're no longer fearful. An important part of stage four is that they blame the rapist, not themselves, for the rape. Stage four is the time that the survivor is most likely to pursue legal action. They're likely to say things like, I would never wish rape on anybody, but it has made me a stronger person. I know it was not my fault, and I'm ready to hold the perpetrator accountable. One thing you likely noticed is that these four stages are very different from each other. In fact, if you talk to the same survivor when they were in these four different stages, they may sound a lot like four different people. 
they certainly are likely to describe four different experiences of sexual violence. And that is the main point I want you to get from this. When a survivor describes what happened to them differently at different times, this is a natural part of the trauma response. Our culture tries to tell us that when a survivor describes what happened to them differently at different times, that they must have made the whole thing up. We need to fight against our culture in this case. A changing story during different parts of the survivor's recovery doesn't equal a false report. A changing story in this case could be a normal and predictable part of the trauma response. I hope this video has helped you better understand the reaction that rape survivors have toward the trauma they've experienced. Look for other videos like this to learn more about how the brain and body react to sexual trauma.